dynamical systems are rules for updating the state over time. Let's unpack that. What does it mean? We'll look at the simplest one-dimensional dynamical system. And that's something like the rate of change of v, the derivative of v, is equal to some constant times v, where v is just some one-dimensional state. This could be something like the rate of growth of bacteria, right? Where V represents the number of bacteria that we have at at least that turn time. And so how much more bacteria get created is proportional to how many we currently have times some constant. And that's just this particular equation. This could be anything. It could be flow through a tube. It could be money. It could be anything. But the key is that it's one dimensional. It's a simple dynamical system. Now, this is so simple that you could actually solve it, right? This is analytically solvable. It's just an exponential function. But dynamical systems are powerful in that they don't, are not restricted to one dimensional systems. They can be arbitrary, multidimensional systems. And so we'll generalize that in this form. x dot, the rate of change of the state x, is going to be equal to a times x, where a represents some matrix. And this, thus, is a linear dynamical system, an LDS, a linear dynamical system. And linear dynamical systems are broad, powerful class of tools for modeling and understanding how states evolve. Now, I keep throwing around the term state. What is state? Well, state is the multidimensional vector that describes what is going on with the system that is being modeled. We're going to describe this as some arbitrary number of steps stages, sorry, st uh, st states uh, or uh, variables that together comprise the state of the system. It's an n-dimensional vector. And they literally can be anything. So let's pretend that x represents the state of a car. And the various components, the various dimensions, are aspects that together comprise the total state of the car. So let's say x1 represents, say, position, where the car is on Earth. And then let's say that x2 represents velocity, how fast the car is currently going. Let's say that x3 represents, oh, I don't know, the RPMs of the engine. Another one could be X4, for example, could be the gear that the car is in. Another one could be the fuel tank level, how much gas is in the car. Another one could be, say, the destination, distance from the destination, distance from target destination. And so if what we are trying to do, for example, is take the car from San Francisco and move it to LA, drive it to LA, then you could imagine how over time all these variables are going to have to be updated accordingly so that the, the car, the state of the car, the, the, all of the variables together describing the car would evolve over time from SF to LA. And if you wanted to do this algorithmically, you could devise a control system that would take the current state of the car and update every, say, five seconds, one second, 500 milliseconds, 10 microseconds, it doesn't matter, what the next state of the car should be, the changes to apply to the state, such that it gets incrementally closer to its goal of reaching Los Angeles. Now, such an algorithm, such an update policy would not be linear, right? It's, it's unclear to me, for example, 
how you could linearly relate the distance from LA to say the RPMs of the engine. Those seem like not necessarily easy things to relate. So that's why that goal, that, that, that task I just described probably would not be modeled by a linear dynamical system because here the A is just an N by N matrix that is updating the, that is providing you with a change to apply to the state given the current state, but it has to be all linear. Despite this constraint, linear dynamical systems are a class of equations that are extremely powerful in modeling a whole host of complex functions and complex systems. So that's it. That's the gist of a dynamical system. 